What's up internet world and welcome back to the channel. Today I bring you the 2021 Subaru Forester. All right, so we're about to go down this little steep hill and it's certain Subaru has a really, really good, obviously all wheel drive symmetrical system, but they force you to have your seatbelt on because when I take my seatbelt off, it makes this really annoying dinging sound. The seatbelt dinging has started again. <laughs> Hang on, let me put my seatbelt on. God, come on Subaru. There we go, zip it. Now, because it's designed to sort of, you know, obviously be a trail rated vehicle because it does have an 8.7 inch ground clearance which is higher than a Tucson, a CRV and let's go through some water. This is exciting. This is exciting. You see the last time we were here we actually it was too high we couldn't get through but it's been a little bit dry so this little stream is a little bit oh, will the GoPro hit? That would be awesome. Nice Subaru. Oh, oh, all the way up, all the way up. Let's go, let's go Subaru. Yeah, I really want to take my seatbelt off because I really want to get out and look, you know, like it's just habit to just step out here and look down. All right. Yes, getting stuck. Is what I love. On the throttle. Oh, this is the this is what Subaru all-wheel drive system is about. Okay, so a little bit forward here, a little bit forward. There we go, that's perfect. Now I'm good. Momentum. So CBT takes a little bit of time to engage when you're going to drive to reverse. Now it does have an inclometer, so I can see what incline I'm at. And now right now I'm at 13, 14 as I slide down here. And perfect, 12 and awesome. Really nice, really smooth, easy. The CVT is smooth. So now obviously I'm gonna be sinking a little bit here, but I'll just get some momentum and go up this little hill on the throttle here and boom, I'm up. We're excited today to bring you the Forester because we are at my buddy Darren Noren's forest and we're about to check the Forester and see how foresty it actually is because 97% of all Foresters sold in the last 10 years are still on the road today. So today is a great day to check this thing out and put it through its course. The last time we were here we actually took the cross trek through the water and the water level was way too high so we couldn't actually put it through the full test but today we are lucky because we've had a little bit of a dry season so we get to put this thing through some real mud. So Subaru has the top safety pick from IIHS. They also have the highest resale value in the last five years and the lowest cost of ownership in its class. Subaru owners have no problems telling me that Subaru all-wheel drive is the best in the snow but maybe it's the best in the mud too. So in the design of the front headlights here, it does have Forrester imprinted. It also has Subaru's signature C-Design LEDs. Now again, these are full LED headlights, but this is not a sport model. The sport model sort of has this orange accent on the front and the sides and the back of the vehicle. This model has your typical Subaru sort of hard plastic all the way around to make it more outdoorsy. So in a terrain like this, it doesn't get damaged. You see, if you put paint there, it would get really beat up. Now, Subarus have a really good starting price. In Canada, they're 28,995, and you can probably get it as loaded as just under $43,000, which is great value, as we'll find out in this video. And with that price point, you get active grill shutters. You've got something called EyeSight by Subaru. And what that essentially is, it's Subaru's eyes looking at the road, and that will include 
front collision, it'll include lane assist, it'll include all the fun stuff that impacts the front of the vehicle. Now it does also have something called all around access, which is the rear version of their safety. So blind spot indicator and rear cross traffic alert on the back of the vehicle. Now, if this is anything like the Crosstrek, this will have no hydraulic lifter and will have a prop rod, and there we go. Now, under the hood of this thing is exactly like the Crosstrek. It's a two and a half liter four cylinder boxer engine with direct injection, and it makes 182 horsepower and 176 foot pounds of torque, which isn't a ton of power, but in a train like this, and with the CVT, with the torque converter, it actually makes a decent amount of pull, sort of. That's its biggest complaint, but I didn't really feel that. Under normal driving circumstances, it felt pretty good. I'm not gonna lie. On paper, ugh, the numbers just suck. But in reality, it's actually decent. Now, obviously, it does have Subarus all-wheel drive, blah, 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 because people were hammering in the comments for not bringing it out right in your face. It does have Subarus all-wheel drive, symmetrical all-wheel drive. So before we go on the side of the vehicle, I wanna talk one last time about the headlights. It does have something called SRH, which is Subaru's version of adaptive headlights. But here's the crazy part. This is the first vehicle I've ever tested to have an individual button on the driver's side that you can push to shut it off. Now, who would wanna shut their adaptive headlights off? And I'm thinking it's more because it lets people know that the feature is there in the vehicle because it's adaptive headlights. Now, as far as looks on the side of the car, it does follow along. It does have Subaru's sort of plastic cladding as they have in the front. It follows all the way through and the back of the vehicle. As far as some driver helps, I should say, it does have sort of keyless entry. You walk up to it, pull the handle, it'll unlock. It also does have heated mirrors and of course, lots of visibility. You can see how big these windows are. Now, an interesting point, these windows are actually not dual pane. They are single pane windows which is kind of weird. I would expect the fronts to at least be dual pane or insulated windows in the front. Now, another weird thing I saw is these are raised roof rails. Now, in some magazines, I've actually seen them where they have sort of holes in here so you can actually tie things down. This specific one doesn't have it. And moving to the back here, let's talk about design. Look at these taillights. They sort of have this cutout. It looks like a lobster claw of sorts, but Regardless of that, the only other flaw in the back, I would say, is this one exhaust. You have sort of this one cutter on the bumper, and then this looks like it doesn't really belong there. But nonetheless, it does have power tailgate, and it does have a huge, huge trunk. Look how extra wide this trunk is. The access is great. This is perfect on why you'd buy this car. Now, the other thing it does have, it does have a hold button on the inside that you can set the memory of the tailgate on the inside of the vehicle you can set the hold on the inside of the vehicle you can actually open it which is cool you don't have to come back here and open it you can press a button on the inside and it automatically opens and automatically closes now in terms of trunk room this does have it the largest in its class at 76 cubic feet of trunk space and you can tell there's a lot of trunk room and that is because Subaru engineers don't believe in making something round because their design team basically is one dude that makes the cars all kind of look the same, except for the WRX and the STI, they look kind of different, but everything else kind of looks almost the same. That's from an outsider looking in, and that's the truth. Now, 76 cubic feet of space is a ton, because look at this, there's a ton, ton of room. They actually have the most passenger cargo space as well. And they have these nice buttons you can pull that just drops down nice and easy. And they also have four different tie downs per side. So they've got two up here and then two underneath here on the front and the back. Now, underneath this cargo compartment, you do have a bit of a tray. It's not sort of a rubberized tray. It's basically made out of compressed styrofoam. So it's not a full out tray. I would have liked to see a rubber cargo tray that I could pull out and put back in with dirty, muddy boots, because if you have muddy boots, where are you gonna put them? So in the back here is really where the build quality shines. I do like the fact that everything inside this car is now LED. You see these manual lights that I can turn on or off? They are LED but the quality is good. Like there's no sort of, there is plastic, but it's good quality plastic on the inside. And I know it's kind of built tough because most people will buy this Forester because of this. They're not worried about how pretty the front end looks. They're not worried about what rim package you can get, even though you can get them in black now. They like the fact that it's rugged, it's tough. And that's why I really don't understand why they just don't have that 
cargo cover and rubber underneath. But regardless, it does have 60-40 split down. It does have this tonneau cover that can pull out on the top. And obviously these back ones connect to the seats. But it can also tow 1,500 pounds. And that was a question. People were asking how much can this tow? So 1,500 pounds is what this can tow. Now, I think if you have a car full of people and you're towing something that's 1,500 pounds, I think this engine will struggle a little bit. I just don't feel like it has enough power to get you up the hill, you know, because it does have simulated gears with the CVT. So I will talk about it a little bit on the drive, but because we're out in the wilderness, I'm not really gonna spend too much time on the highway, but I wanna talk about simulated gears. Now the way CVT works, it's it sort of keeps the RPM in its power band, which in this specific case is about 45 on RPM. Now it does have something called simulated gears, so it, it predetermines gears. So when you're driving, it's not like it's like pretends it's gears. They're fake gears. And they do that because people are used to having a real seven speed, eight speed or nine speed transmission. And because this one doesn't really have gears, it simulates gears. So what does that do? That makes you feel like you're driving a car with real gears. The only problem with that is that you're not always in the correct power band when you're making one of these. I don't know if that makes sense. If it doesn't, comment below. All right, so I'm in the back of the 2021 Subaru Forester. And first things first, before I jump in is they have this sort of leg ledge that I can step in and it, you know what it's there for? It's there so I can access my roof rails. I put my leg here and I step up. That is pretty cool. It doesn't come all the way around and have this sill here. It's just nice and big that my whole foot can go on there. But let's talk about getting in. Now, as I sit in here, the first thing I notice is I do have heated seats but I also noticed that this is not your typical Subaru because Subaru doors are sort of hollow. And when I close this, it feels solid. That's new. So it does have heated seats in the back, two increments of heated seats. It does have U two USBs in the back. It also does have a two layered sort of compartment holder on the back of the seats on both sides, not just one side or the other. It also does have the largest volume in the passenger segment so this has 112 cubic feet of passenger space um, in compared to a crv it has 106 the rav4 has 99 and last but not least is the escape at 104 so this is significantly larger than any of those three vehicles and i can feel it because it's a lot of space this is like almost like my dodge ram there's so much space decent amount of headroom not the most headroom in the world but still a decent amount um, no, that I'm five, eight and a half, but let's talk about cup holders because Subaru loves their cup holders. Because remember, the, the Ascent has 19 cup holders. This thing in the back has four, two here, little guys here, pretty shallow, but eh, not too bad. And obviously, two bo bottle holders in each door. I'm um, sorry, a bottle holder in each door. But as far as quality, the quality is really good. These seats are really good. The fit and finish, the feel is really good. And again, remember you can pull those buttons and these seats will fold down. It also does have this pull handle. You can pull it here. Now, one more thing, the floor. The floor, because this is all wheel drive, it does have a center shaft. Now, it doesn't have a very high floor, which is sort of weird. You'd think that have a really high center floor, but in the middle, that bump isn't very high. Now this might sound like a really small thing, but it also does have a rear vent. So you have vents in the back, which sounds crazy. But remember at this price point to have vents in the back actually costs moolah. All right, so I'm in, see, this is crazy. Subaru, the front doors feel less solid than the back doors, which is totally unheard of. The fronts are always solid and the backs are always hollow. But this case, the back is solid. The front is like medium ishy hollow. Anyways, let's jump in. Now, this has a 10-way adjustable seat. It's pretty good. Obviously, I drove it here. They're comfortable. They are good, comfortable seats. No real complaints about them. Uh, the only real complaint I have about most seats out there is me being five, eight and a half. I still feel like seats aren't exactly long enough on the bottom. So I can only imagine people that are taller than me. So that's my only complaint about the seat. If I had to complain about something, other than that, the seats are awesome. Okay, so let's get into the deep dive on this dash here. There is some, I wouldn't say improvements, but there's a lot of good pieces here. It's not all plastic. There is some futuristic cuts and shapes and design. So the design on the inside of the cabin when it comes to the form of the doors are a lot more sort of futuristic than the outside of the car. And that's totally the case with most Subarus out there. The steering wheel is standard. Subaru has this global platform. Basically, the, 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 the chassis they built the Subarus on now are pretty much the same thing. And that's the case also with the steering wheel. This steering wheel is pretty much the same on all the four Subarus we've reviewed. Same with this eight inch 
uh, infotainment screen. It's all the same. Same with the upper driver display. It's all the same. The only addition this one has is it does have sort of a, a, a driver distraction mitigation system, which essentially means that they've got something looking at your face. So if your eyeballs sort of droop down or it sort of goes down, you know, not focused on the road, it reminds you, please stay focused on the road or put both hands on the wheel. It basically gives you, it basically gives you a warning so you can start looking at the road again and not being distracted or getting drowsy or falling asleep. So that's kind of nice. It has some of those safety features. And as I mentioned on the outside with that, with those adaptive headlights on the left here, you do have a lot of buttons that are very sort of obvious buttons, but Subaru wants you to know that they have them. So for example, on the on this left side here, I'll just start. So this is gonna be pretty in-depth on the in interior. If you don't wanna to listen to this, you can skip the next two or three minutes. But on the left here, essentially we have two memory seats. We do have automatic windows on both sides, left and right. It also does have power trunk. So I can press this button, I can open it and close it as I mentioned. Again, on the left side, it does have this SRH button where I can shut off the adaptive headlights um, and I can set the memory. So if I push it in, there's a memory to the height it sets. Now, most cars you have to get out, you hold the button down, but in this specific case, you just press this button. It also does have a stability program that you can shut it off. And the big one is stop and start or auto stop start. So you can hit this button and it disables auto stop start. Now in some vehicles you can't shut it off and that's a big deterrent from people actually buying them because some people hate being able to shut it off and on. They just find it too jerkiness. So you can hit that button and shut it off. Same with blind spot indicator and something called eyesight, which essentially is up here. So it's got these two eyes looking forward. Now in the other Subarus we reviewed, when they have eyesight, what happens is this visor is really small. But this visor on this specific Forester, you can actually see that it actually hits the eyesight, which in the other Subarus, it's actually a really small visor and it sort of fits in between the eyesight and that. And I prefer these big ones because there's still a gap between this rear view mirror and the window, because this is the world's biggest window, if I didn't mention that already. It's huge, the visibility is awesome. Like everywhere I look, I see basically see glass. And that probably is a big, big thumbs up for a lot of people that buy Foresters. They just probably get in other vehicles and realize that it feels cramped, a bit claustrophobic. And this thing, there's just lots of windows, including this panoramic sunroof. Now, they call this panoramic, but it's not exactly panoramic. It's just like a bigger sunroof. And if you want to close the shade, it's not powered. You actually have to reach all the way back here, which is not the easiest to pull it forward. Not complaining because obviously people who buy Subarus are active. I'm also not complaining that this doesn't have wireless charging because if you want to use Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, you have to plug it in. And when you plug it in, it's charging. So yes, there's no wireless charging in this. Come on, haters, hate away. And just like other Subarus we've reviewed, this does not have ventilated seats or air conditioning seats. It does have heated seats in the front. It has low and high, and they're not a digital button or even a soft button. They're similar to the other ones. They're just basically a hard plastic click on or off, which is pretty traditionally Subaru. Now it also does have something called auto vehicle hold, which essentially means when you come to a stop, when you press the brake, it doesn't move forward. It just actually stops right there. So you're not constantly pressing the brake and stop and go traffic. So you can hit this button, it goes on and off, but it does have automatic parking brake. And that is different than the Impreza, which has a handbrake. This is just an electromechanical parking brake that locks the rear wheels, which I'm not sure how I feel about that. I'd like to have the handbrake, but again, we're trying to get cleaner and newer and more up to date because again, this is a 2021 and it's been refreshed a little bit because everything in here has LEDs. There's no amber lighting. It's all LED lighting inside. So two deeper things I wanna talk about again is this mitigation system. It can actually visually see five driver profiles and it can set the seat, it can set the climate control and the outside mirrors all on how you look. Now, I know I talked about traditional and a lot of hard buttons and a lot of basics here but it's got that, that is pretty cool. It also does have knee airbags, which is a good safety feature because Subaru is all about safety because this one, as I mentioned earlier, the IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus. But let's get to the meat and potatoes and that's the all wheel drive system and this X mode. You see, as I mentioned in the cross Trek, they have one X mode and this one has a dual X mode. So what is X mode exactly and how does it work? Now X mode on downhill applies braking to make sure it's called basically hill descent. So up to 20 kilometers an hour, it'll automatically brake for you when it detects you sort of the car sliding or not going straight. Now, if I'm pointing straight and as I went down that bank, that muddy bank, you'll notice the car straightened up. And what about when I'm going uphill? Well, what it does essentially is it lowers gear ratios or simulated gear ratios 
And on top of that, it applies more pressure on the all-wheel drive clutch plates by 25% and essentially gets the power to where it has to go. And if I'm on the throttle, I need to get up, it'll let me break traction and spin the wheels to let me get up the hill, which is pretty cool because that is more designed to get me up hills and not get stuck or not have one wheel spin like crazy. Now, the only complaints I have about the Forester is the lack of storage space on the inside of the cabin. Now, it does have a okay amount of storage space on the doors, but I would like to see sort of a compartment up here in the dash. It seems like it's kind of built or designed for that, but it's just kind of missing that. It does have a really nice, soft sort of padded armrest. It's a lot softer than even the other Subarus we've reviewed. This is a different padding they have on the Forester than they have the Ascent and the Impreza. And again, this center console is just really tight. I can't really fit a whole lot. Cup holders, pretty straightforward. It does have a locking area, but again, I would just like more space. Even the front here for a cell phone, this is an iPhone 12 and it just can't fit very well. Now, if you wanna see me take a deep dive in this infotainment, I've actually done that in the Cross Trek. So I won't do that here in the Forester, but before I take it for a drive, I wanna talk about the seats one last time and let you guys know that you can get them in cloth seats, which is pretty cool cloth seats and if you get the most loaded version you can get them in a two-tone leather obviously that's pretty standard in most cars they're all leather but you can get a two-tone version of it which is pretty cool because when i think about forester i think about like five ten year old foresters that are slammed with cloth seats you know just like the real rough and tough forester so let's take this thing on the trails and see how it drives <laughs> All right, so now I'm taking this 2021 Subaru Forester for a drive, and I'm taking the same sort of train as I did the Crosstrek, just to feel out. This is definitely a softer suspension than the Crosstrek. Obviously, it sits a hair higher, but it's, it is softer, there's no doubt. So I'm gonna just switch, just switch this over now to the X-Drive. Uh, sorry, did I say X-Drive? I'm X-Mode. X oh, all right. Now, it's, it is muckier today than it was with the cross track. All right. I'm going to come to a stop to put this in. All right. X mode. Activate. There we go. And so, again, there's two modes. Now it's in the mud mode, and we'll just go through this little train here. Nice and muddy. Oh, love it. I love it. So, now at this price point, you have independent suspension on all four corners which might sound crazy but remember the price of this thing so it's all about the price now this does lack in full tech so some of the tech or the integration of the tech on the infotainment is better in other manufacturers but there's so much little stuff you get in this thing that just makes it price so competitive great brakes this does have two piston calipers on the front on the throttle it's just cool that you can just drive with the family, get the whole squad in the car, and then take it off road and on the throttle. Now, I'm sure a lot of people that drive this in the city would like to have the 2.4 liter four cylinder from the uh, Outback XT, which basically makes 260 horsepower. So they'd like to have that motor, but this is okay. I mean, I know there's a lot of hate on that, but whew, that was a deep one. <laughs> Oh, this is nice and mucky. Whoa, whoa. Great steering. Now this is speed sensitive steering. Obviously I'm not driving fast enough to test it out, but on the actual road. So this review is gonna be all of this. There's not gonna be no on the road. There's gonna be no highway. Um, now obviously it's gonna miss some of the stuff that you need to really see, which is basically the distracting driving thing that I was telling you guys about. And also the simulated gears, that would have been really cool to show you guys. But I've, had, I've driven other Subarus and you guys have seen the other reviews, but this one is really cool because it's a beautiful day out. This temperature is perfect. And I'm at a 15 degree incline and so let's try to back up. Let's try this backing up. We don't have, uh, I don't have Ian videotaping outside. I'm, the drone's above me following me, but this is really cool to see. Nope, not going anywhere. All four wheels are spinning. Let's check this out. Let's see if all four wheels are spinning here. I love seeing this kind of stuff. No, I'm basically stuck between a rock in the front and it's the back wheels are spinning. So let's try a different mode and see if I can get out of this thing. Nope, my foot's on the ground and the back wheel's just rotating. Let's try different modes now. So I'm gonna put this in the other X mode and see if it makes a difference here. Nope, I'm gonna take X mode off and see if that'll make a difference. So push X mode off. I'm gonna manually try to shut off ESP and see if that makes a difference. Okay. 
Now I think it's just a little bit too tight. So let me go forward a hair and then get off this little rut here and then pull out a bit. So I just think actually it's not the vehicle, it's the tires. These tires are not the best specific tires. So this is a tough one, that's cheating. I'm asking the car to do too much. So let me go back into X mode here. And as soon as I do that, you can feel the brake kind of push down because it's activating the hill descent and I can see it on the screen right there. So my windows up because I will get wet here on the throttle. <laughs> oh man, great all wheel drive system. If Subaru would take some of the word tracks, then let's say Ford does with their water fording. Now think about this, if this said water fording up to 15 inches, they talk about the height, like the clearance at eight and a half, eight point seven 8.7 inches. But if they talked about water fording, because the Bronco does that, and if it said, well, the water fording is 18 inches or you know 26 inches or whatever the number, and at least it would give a, a metric to compare against something that Ford is really gonna hammer with their Bronco. You know, they advertise that like crazy. Just use the same metrics. Then at least you have some sort of comparative analysis against it. So, but look at this, I'm going in some pretty rough terrain and I'm feeling comfortable. Nothing crazy and wild about this. It's just that if you live in the city, you're not really thinking Subaru. Really good steering. Now, how does it compare against the Crosstrek? If you own a Subaru already, I'd say the this is just a bit bigger. This does feel bigger. Everything else is kind of the same. All the buttons are kind of the same. The interior is kind of the same. Again, this has the dual version, not the single, but oh, nice. Great, great. <laughs> on the brakes, on the turns, great. Just digs in really well. I want to give a big shout out to Darren Noren for letting us have fun in this forest because it is awesome to have a playground like this and to Subaru Canada for loaning us this 2021 Forester. Now, if you have a vehicle you want us to review, obviously in whatever mode you would allow us to, we would be grateful. So if there is a car you want us to review that you own, hit us up on Instagram at Accelerate TV and we'd more than happy to review it. As always, thanks for watching. And if you like this review, make, don't forget to subscribe. Fresh